Bruh. All right, we got the lures printed. We removed them from the build plate. We washed them and we cured them. Pretty freaking sweet. Now what? Well, let's go. You now have an eyeball and a lure body. So one thing you'll notice when we design these is, you know, we have this hollow cavity inside and you really need to clean that out extremely, extremely well. I like to use these pipettes. You know, you can use anything to kind of suck up your cleaning fluid. Make sure you squirt it in there nice and good, wash it out. Even after doing all that, I would still run into problems with beads or anything I put on the inside, kind of getting a little bit of residue still on them and clumping up. And I know what you're saying. Bro, you're so secure inside there with a the UV light. Yeah, I did that, dude. I did that. Still, same problem. I just think you can't get a really good, solid clean in there. So my solution was simple. So I grabbed some polycrylic. That was creepy. It's the water-based one. You can use whatever one you want. It doesn't really matter. You can use any clear coat. You know, I've even sprayed the spray clear coat in there before just to get it in there. And what you want to do is get enough in there to kind of coat the whole inside. So I put a bunch in there and I just kind of roll it around in there. Try not to make a giant mess. Remember, I still got an eye hole here. You don't want to dump it out just yet. But you want to get a nice coating over as much of it as possible. Just roll it around in there, boys. Whoa! Jeez. Don't do that. My lure is now crying because it is so disgusting. Just wipe it off. But you do want to dump out all the excess. Wipe it off and let it dry overnight. And you're ready for phase two. All right, first thing we're going to do is sand off all of the little nubs that came from the supports we put on our lures. You watched that video. I know you did. So on this particular lure here, I kind of screwed up because I was trying to go along this edge here to put my supports instead of along the back. And you'll see that by doing that, it makes it a lot more difficult. If I show you this little lure here, you know, you can see they're right along the back. I use sanding mesh because uh, it doesn't get all clogged up. If you look at this um, 400 grit wet dry, it's just a mess. It works great, but it just gets clogged up really easily. So I've been using the sanding mesh. I have a link to it in the description below to sand these, um, and it works a whole lot better. So you can see if I'm on the back, it's easy. When I'm on this edge here, it's a little trickier, especially since I'm close to my sweet, cool details. But um, I'm just sanding it, and that's it. It's pretty straightforward. It, uh, it doesn't take much, really, to sand this stuff. If you have something that's particularly difficult to sand, you maybe can sand it kind of after you wash it real well, you know, put on your gloves and, um, you know, sand it then. But, but really, this is pretty straightforward. And I just get all of this stuff off. You will see the nose here is not perfectly flat. We got this kind of ridge here. So you just want to make sure that you sand it all the way down. That's really it. You know, if you want to, you can sand a light sand on the um, other parts. I find that sometimes that helps with um, adhesion. Make sure you get any of the last little, if there's any last little bits of uncured resin or anything like that, get those off. Probably not totally necessary, but I do think that's a pretty good practice. All right, now we just need to get all of this dust off. Do that. Let's get a rag and a little isopropyl alcohol. Probably should have some gloves on for this. I just kind of rub everything down. I use isopropyl alcohol because it um, evaporates pretty quickly. You know, you can use water, but resin, 3D printer resin in particular, uh, absorbs water. Uh, that's why we're going to coat it with clear coat and paint and everything, because over time it's uh, hydrostatic and it will absorb water and you'll get completely close up there. I got some in the eye cavity. All right, so after I clean this off, I'm just going to let it sit here and make sure that all of this ISO has evaporated off. Of course, I am looking for the super glue again. Right here, bro. I need to line my entire shop wall with super glue. Okay, now we're, what we're going to do is insert any rattles that we want to insert into here, and then we're going to put the eye into place. We 3D printed. Okay, so one thing I like to do is just make sure that it's going to be a relatively smooth fit in there. Nothing too crazy. It's a little tight. I might have gone too far there. 
it's a little tight in there, but it's gonna slide right in just fine. And then we want to figure out what we're gonna put in there. I'm just gonna use these BBs that I have sitting here. Not too many. This is a um, variation of the twitch bait I've been working on. It's got this under underside um, eyelet, front eyelet point. So I'm hoping this one floats. And when I pull it, it kind of dives down. So it'll be very, very shallow running. Okay, so we got our BBs in there. And you'll notice, right, if it tips this way, those BBs are gonna come to the front and they could pop up there. And we're about to put a whole bunch of super glue in there. And so when we put the super glue around this, we press that into place, we kind of always wanna make sure that this lure is kind of nose up. So those BBs stay back. If they, if they come forward, they get some super glue on them, and they go back, your, your rattles are hosed, right? You're, they're just gonna stick someplace in there and it's gonna be not a good scene. So that is the most kind of tricky part, if you will, of this whole situation. Um, you don't have to use super glue. You can use some two-part epoxy. You do want it to be relatively thick because you want to kind of seal up this area as much as possible from a water standpoint as well. Uh, we're gonna put plenty of clear coat and paint on it, but just to make sure that it's nice and sealed. That's what we're gonna do. All right. So I put a lot more on this side than this side because this side is going up top. And we're just going to press in there just like that. All right, you can see I made a giant mess there. I don't want all this on the outside. So I still have my rag with isopropyl alcohol in it. I'm gonna come and I'm gonna try to get as much of that off as possible. Ooh, I'm sticking to my bait. <laughs> this is why I wear gloves, people. Like, I cannot be trusted with this stuff. All right, I do a little more sanding there, but I wanna make sure that that super glue sets up completely before you start tipping this bait forward again to keep all that off of there. Ugh. <laughs> That's cool. All right, so I'm gonna set this on here and let it dry for a good while, while I go get a new glove. All right, since I splooged a little super glue over the outside of the lure, I'm gonna hit it with some more sandpaper real quick. I wanna make sure all of that super glue is out of the way. Now, like, I'm not a um, perfectionist when it comes to lure finishes at all, right? Don't think the fish care, and I'm only making these for me and the fish. But if you do get that super glue on there, it does kind of impact the ability for the paint to adhere a lot of times. It doesn't necessarily like to stick to it. Right there's a, just a little bit more super glue there. So, come across this top eye section too. Make sure there's no globs of super glue anywhere on there. All right, use my rag. A little bit of ISO left on there. Get all of this kind of gunk off. And as soon as this ISO evaporates, we'll be ready for the next step. So whatever method you're gonna to use to attach uh, hooks and line to your lure, this is the time I like to put at least a couple of those on so that um, when we go to paint it, you know, we have something to hold on to. If you have a crankbait lip, now it's time to put it on as well. We got way too much super glue on there. Having a little uh, pair of pliers is super helpful at this point. And I see them there like on the other side of the shop. So. I'm gonna grab these giant pair of pliers. But you do wanna be careful here. I found that these are, um, these screw eyes that I get from Barlow's, if um, you put too much pressure on them, they will just break right off. And that of course is no good. All right, get that relatively straight. And check this out. I uh, didn't wait long enough. So I got balls kind of stuck up in there. Hopefully, um, that's a temporary thing, but probably not, right? That's why it's really important. I should have just left this here for an hour or two and come back 
but we got those on. Now I'm gonna leave it for an hour or two, let everything dry, and uh, we'll be back for the next step. All right, guys, we are pretty well ready, I think. It's been about 30 minutes. Got something sticky on my balls, though. I don't know if it's super glue or something is not good in there, but either way. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is put on a base clear coat. Now it's important when you get this base on that it is nice and clean, your surface that is, your lure, and that you don't really touch it too much afterwards. So what I'm gonna do is I have these little, little guys that I cook up that, um, you know, it's just an alligator clip, piece of wire, bend it on the end. So we're just gonna hook this onto one of the screw eyes. It really doesn't matter at this point whether it's up or down. I like to keep everything, you know, kind of tail down at this point. If I do get any runs, I want them to run towards the tail. I'm gonna put on some gloves, give it one last clean, and away we go. So this is the clear coat I'm using. This is the Krylon, yeah, Krylon Color Max Enamel Gloss Clear. I've used the um, Rust-Oleum Gloss Clear Enamel as well. Both of them seem to work just fine. I think you'll be amazed at the change of this lure. It's gonna go from kind of all scratched up to sparkly clear. Let's go spray. So I spray outside because this stuff like kicks my ass every time I use it inside. I'm allergic to like everything. Uh, but this stuff like really bugs my eyes and makes them all watery and everything. So outside, good ventilation and a mask, probably what you're gonna wanna rock. So we got a nice coat of the clear coat on there. And again, I just use the rattle can. Whatever clear coat you wanna use is up to you. I just like to do something that's pretty quick and easy at this point, because I got a lot of lures to do. So here's what they look like when they are finally clear coated. I usually do two or three clear coats on them uh, just to make sure it has a nice even layer and they're ready to paint. So at this point you are ready to test to see how your lure swims. One thing I will say is you want to make sure that you have this eye area where we inserted the eye really, really tight. We don't want water in there. So you want to make sure you go over that part with maybe some thin epoxy to make sure that it is really watertight. Uh, so when you go throw it in your pool or in your pond or whatever, it's not going to leak. Because if you get water in there, it's a real pain in the rear. You're pretty much, I don't want to say done, but it's going to take a long time to evaporate. We don't want that. All right, so in the next video, we're going to get into painting. I suck at painting, but I'm gonna show you how I make it a little bit easier on myself with some 3D printed stencils for both paint as well as stickers. Take care, tight lines. Woo.